Good morning, friends, and welcome back to the place where we rise with the Lord, where we rely upon His Holy Word each and every day of our lives. I'm Motorcycle Pastor. This is where we're opening up morning by morning, Charles Spurgeon's Daily Devotional. This morning we're opening to 1 Corinthians 15.45, where it has three simple words. The last Adam. Let's hear what Charles has to say about that. Jesus is the representative head of his people. In Adam, every heir of flesh and blood has a personal interest because he is the covenant head and representative of the race when considered under the law of works. So under the law of grace, every redeemed soul is one with the Lord from heaven. Since he is the second Adam, the sponsor and substitute of the elect in the new covenant of love. The Apostle Paul declares that Levi was in the loins of Abraham when Melchizedek met him. It's a certain truth that the believer was in the loins of Jesus Christ, the mediator, when in eternity the covenant settlements of grace were decreed, ratified, and made sure forevermore. Whatever Christ has done, he has accomplished for the whole body of his church. We were crucified in him and buried with him. And to make it still more wonderful, we are risen with him and even ascended with him to the seat on high. It is in this way that the church has fulfilled the law and is blessed in the beloved. She's regarded with satisfaction by the just Jehovah, for he views her in Jesus and does not look upon her as separate from her covenant head. As the anointed Redeemer of Israel, Christ Jesus has nothing distinct from his church, but all that he has, he holds for her. Adam's righteousness was ours so long as he maintained it. And his sin was ours the moment that he committed it. And in the same way, all that the second Adam is, is our, all that the second Adam is, or does, is ours as well as his, because he is our representative. Here's the foundation of the covenant of grace. This gracious system of representation and substitution, which moved Justin Martyr to cry out, O oh, blessed change, O oh, sweet permutation. This is the very groundwork of the gospel of our salvation and is to be received with strong faith and rapturous joy. Brothers and sisters, how often do you take the time to consider it? Just yesterday, Christmas evening, I spoke to you about the same concept about not just giving in to celebration, but remembering what was done for us, that Jesus, this bearer of our sins, this perfect and willing sacrifice, stood in the place of another. Now, I love how Spurgeon connected it to, he's no longer standing in the place of one, one who had committed the crime that it had been impugned, the crimes of Adam, onto us, the generations that followed. And yet because of Jesus' perfect divinity, he can mete out his grace, his salvation, his authority, his redemption of us all. We have to remember at all times, and we have to remember today, the morning after Christmas, what he's done. Why? Because too quickly, people slip back into their routines. They say Christmas is behind us, and they want to look to the world. They want to celebrate and remember the gift giving. They want to celebrate maybe even that they went to church with friends on Christmas. But they forget the reason why it's a celebration. Because somebody, because God, had done not just something amazing, but something miraculous, something life-altering. You see, we can't slip back into the normalcy of this world 
because a miracle has happened in our lives. We have been saved. We have been redeemed. We have been set free. And if we're free, doesn't that mean that we would live differently? We're free. Why would we run back to the taskmaster, to the slave master, to the one who drove us before? Why not run forward, raising our eyes and our hands to embrace the one who has set us free? That is Jesus. Today, as you go out into the world, I want to challenge you to live for him, to go out in a new way and celebrate the gift that you were given. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to seize this day for all it's worth, celebrating and remembering what God has done for you, what Jesus has done for you. The more we think about it, the more we know it. We're not depressed. We're even more celebratory. See, Christmas wasn't about presents. This day after, this morning, we're reminded that we have the most amazing gift of all. Not a Savior that was born, but a Savior that died to save the world. Live into that today, brothers and sisters, and enjoy today for all it's worth in Christ. God bless you. I'm Motorcycle Pastor saying, I'll see you in the evening.